milestone year this year. All right. You're 39 years old. Huh? Yes. What area? I mean, you're born here in Atlantic City? I, yes, I was born right here, Atlantic City Medical Center right here in the city and was born and raised for about 16 years of my life, lived in Dennis Park. Oh, yeah. Over the second bridge in, in the Lagoon area. Somebody here told me you lived over there. Yeah, we lived there for about 16 years and then I guess my junior year of High school, we moved out to Egg Harbor Township, uh -huh. where I lived until I got married in 2010, and currently live in Mays Landing with my wife and daughter. All right, what about siblings? Yeah, um, we have a sister. I have a sister. You do have a sister. Yep, I have a sister. Um, her name is Phyllis Atkinson. She currently lives in Buffalo. Oh, is that right? Is she older? Or yeah, she's about 18 years older. Oh, okay. Than me, yes. Okay. You were an apple in the eye of your mom and pop. Yes, guess, right? yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And I know your pop was proud when he saw it was a boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Got somebody to name after him. So. Yeah, named after him. Yep. Right. That was a wonderful thing. Well, that's great. You have a sister. Yes. Uh, what about your schooling, Joy? Uh, what is the background, Joy? Um, Explain it to me. So I started out in the um, Atlantic City Public Schools from kindergarten to the second grade. I went to Venice Park School and then from third grade through the sixth grade. You went to Venice Park? I went on Everything Park was over there in Venice yep. Park. Yeah. I was able to walk home and walk to school and you know all that. And then um, from the third grade through the sixth grade because Venice Park at that time only went to the second grade. So from third grade to sixth grade, I went to Chelsea Heights mm -hmm. School, mm -hmm. um, and then from the seventh grade and eighth grade years, I actually that began my career in Catholic school. I went to St. James Catholic School in Ventnor for those two years, and then for high school, I was a Holy Spirit Spartan. All right, go blue and go blue and go. <laughs> um, and then for my college years, I graduated from the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey in 1999 with a Bachelor of Science degree in the field of information and computer science. Oh, okay. That's beautiful. You were, you were enough mathematical, uh, mathematical genius like your daddy or all those numbers. Well, I'm, I, you know, I'm not as good as he is. He, <laughs> he, you know, if it wasn't for him, I, <laughs> I probably <laughs> wouldn't have been. Wouldn't you know. But, um, he, uh, but, you know, I, um, I've always enjoyed computers, yeah. so um, you know I, I went in basically on the com on the information systems track, which was more computer related. Or you know, did yeah. some math yeah. and everything, but it was mostly you know um, databases and different um, computer programs and mm. things like that. that Is I that what you're doing now when you um, job? Somewhat. I currently work. Over at the FAA, I've been affiliated with the FAA for about 15 and a half years. Um, I currently work for 
a company called Inru Computer Solutions, mm -hmm. and I'm a computer scientist, and I basically test out um, aviation software. Mm -hmm. um, I also you create programs, show? No, I don't really create programs. I but I, I test out what the programmers yeah, right. do. Um, I also had the opportunity to travel and go out to the various air traffic control centers and um, work with the air traffic controllers, you know, on the software, any nuances um, to the software. It's something that, similar to what my brother-in-law does. Oh, okay. Leon Bryant. Y yeah, yeah. yeah. Leon. I know Leon. Yeah. Yep, I know him very well. Yep, so I've been doing that. Right out of college, I started doing that, um, you know, work for him couple of different firms and um, you know I can actually boast that in both companies that I work for I've been one of the youngest named supervisors mm -hmm. within my group yeah and everything so I mean I mean it's a job that I enjoy to go to every yeah. day oh, the one with the pretty eyes right? <laughs> <laughs> well if that works you know listen listen whatever works listen, I'll try to make is that, that uh, where you went over, you got over as a Kappa? I actually went over as a Kappa in the alumni chapter. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to do it when I was an undergrad, but, you know, I said I wanted to focus more on, you know, my schoolwork. I had yeah. heavy, you know, class load probably all four years of college. I had a heavy class load. So, you know, I didn't want to have any distractions. Yeah, right. So, um, I was actually one of the, I was actually part of the first line that went over as part of the Atlantic City alumni chapter mm -hmm. of Cap Alpha Psi, which I have been a member of that now for um, close to 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently, and I'm also currently the president of the alumni chapter, serving my fourth term. Is that right? As my fourth and final term. Yeah. As what are the functions of that? So we, I mean, um, Cap Alpha Psi, our motto is, is achievement in every mm -hmm. field of human endeavor. And, you know, we strive to achieve in every field that we can. Basically anything that we involve ourselves in aside from the fraternity, yeah. we want to achieve. And we do a lot of social action, mm -hmm. um, a lot of social action work, a lot of community service work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do a lot, you know, with the fraternity. It's a great brotherhood that, you know, I was really privileged and, you know, fortunate to be a part of. And, um, you know, they've embraced me. And, again, I was one of the youngest alumni members to go mm -hmm. over. And just the fact that they had faith in me to represent them as their leader right. and, as, right. and as their president still still after 12 years is still a humbling and honoring yeah, experience it really to is. be able to lead because I think the oldest one that's in our chapter right now is about like is in his 70s mm. so to be able to lead a group oh, yeah. of 40, 50 yeah, 60 and 70s 60 and right? 70s is, is you know is a real honor and they you know respect me as much as I respect and love them. Yeah, right. Was your wife a Delta? No, she actually wasn't interested in, in the, Greek that, life that, at all. Yeah. No, she, if you ask her, she'll tell you she's me, find me. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met your wife. Uh, yeah, she, my wife is actually, um, my wife and my daughter is actually, they're members of St. James A&E. Mm -hmm. um, right, right next door, I, you know, always tease. I had to go, I had to go outside the box to find my good thing. <laughs> but, um... Was she a member of St. James? Member of St. James, lifelong member of St. James, yeah. her and my daughter and her um, mother and father. Um, and we actually got married at St. James. Oh, yeah. Pastor Days and yeah. their pastor, Reverend Coxum, you know, they co-officiated the ceremony. That's wonderful. How old is your daughter? She is 24. Her name is Kyle McQueen. She's she 24. Was? She's 24. She's actually my stepdaughter. Oh, you were saying you look yeah, no. you know, you back. You're 24. Thank you. I appreciate mother. that. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but yeah, she's um, she's my stepdaughter. But when me, uh -huh. my when my wife and I began dating, Kyra was 
in the sixth grade. That's your name, Kyra? It's Kyra, Pretty yes. Pretty name, yeah. Yes. She was in the sixth grade when we started dating. All right. So, you know, I was able to basically be with her all through the middle school years, the high school years, college years. She's a graduate of Montclair State University. Oh, all right. So, you know, you okay. know, and, and, I'm, and I'm one of those people. Yeah, I know that there's those, you know, stepson, stepdaughter titles, but, you know. She's yours. So she's you know, my. That's she's, right. I you know, understand she's, that. She's, you know, she's my daughter, and, you know, me and her father, we have a great relationship. Yeah. And, you know, I told him I'm not trying to step in and take your position, but we she were realized, she, realized, she realizes that, too, I guess, yes. her own father. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joy, when did you join the Second Baptist Church? Were you one of those who were made to go to church when you were younger, or what? Well, yeah, you know, my mom and my mom actually started coming to Second Baptist. Um, actually, she started coming probably around the late, I would say the late 60s, probably, because she was born and raised in Virginia, but uh -huh. she would come up here during her college um, years in the summertime, mm -hmm. her and another um, one of my godmothers, mm -hmm. they would come up here in the summertime and they would stay with an older person. But my mom, she came to Second Baptist back then. She sang back then under, I believe, um, it was Earl, I can't remember his last name now, but he was the musician here mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. So then... Yeah, it was under Reverend Cole. I never under Reverend Cole, Reverend yes. Cole, yeah, right. yep, under Reverend Cole. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you know, of course, at, you know, at that age, you know, back then, us yeah, as young right. people, we didn't have a choice. You <laughs> was getting up on Sunday morning and, going to and church, you was right. going to church. Yeah. So I, I actually um, became a member of Second Baptist. I joined in March of 1986, I was 10 years old when I walked down the aisle. And actually, it, it wasn't a far walk, as you know, yeah, even back then, know, know. you know, when your kids was on the, when your parents was on the choir, you had to sit in the front row. Yeah, right. So I just walked right from the front row, right on up. And, and it was funny because Reverend Cole actually, when I came up and joined the church, Reverend Cole thought I was already a member of the church because I was going to Sunday school. I was, yeah, you know, you know, I was on the Rosebud Choir. I was doing everything. I was just going to ask you about that. When did you uh, uh, discover your singing, singing habits? The Rosebud <laughs> Choir. So I was on, yes, I was on the Rosebud Choir and all that. Yeah, I, I am, I am a a music ministry baby. Right. All right. Um, I started out in the Rosebud Choir. Like I said again, when I was ten years old. You know, um, I transitioned into the youth choir mm -hmm. when I was 13 years old um, under my godmother, Cynthia Jennings. She was the choir director back then. And then um, back to the Rosebuds, my godfather, Thomas Jennings, mm -hmm. was playing for the Rosebuds back then. Um, I transitioned. He's your godfather. Yes. Those are, those are my godparents. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so I, I transitioned into the youth choir. And um, the youth choir age range was 13 to 18. I kind of cheated a little bit because mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to leave you the youth choir. You weren't quite 13, yeah. So, but no, I, no, I did join when I was 13, but I was supposed to leave oh, right. when I was 18. I stayed oh, on the youth okay. choir until I was 21. Oh, right. And um, Minister Jennings tapped me on the shoulder. It was, it's time it was like, this is your last Sunday <laughs> with the youth choir, and then I became a member of the Inspirational Choral Ensemble. Yeah, all right. And then um, I also sang with the men's choir mm -hmm. under um, Pop McEwen. He was, mm -hmm. the, he, he was the director back then, God rest his soul. Um, and, um, and then um, I've been singing. Ever since Was then. that when Charles Lyles was here, too, at the time? Yeah. Right? When I... Um, when I was coming to the church, um, Reverend, he's, he's a reverend now, but Reverend David Hackley, Hackley yeah. was actually the organist All right. back then. But when I started singing, that was when Thomas had came back from the Air Force and had, you know, served his time, you know, in the United States Air Force. Mm -hmm. And then he was back here, he was back here uh, full force. Um, you know, with Cynthia and 
Hey, little Sean J. Hey, little Sean J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you have a very unique singing voice. Can you describe it to me? Because, you know, the guys in our choir uh, talk about how you sound like you're hoarse all the yeah. time. <laughs> but when you start singing, it just goes away. Well, um, in addition to uh, being a part of the music ministries mm -hmm. here, I also, I, I also sing with or sang with um, a community choir, Minister John Howard Jr. and yeah. Anton Levites. Um, I was actually one of the, the charter members mm -hmm. of that choir. Um, and the hoarseness came from early on, you know, I kind of messed up my voice a little bit by over singing. Oh, we're doing. And, um, and I mean, it's a great testimony. But it comes back, guys. Let's go yeah, back. it comes, well, I actually, um, I developed in the midst of singing, of all the singing I was doing. I think back then, this was probably about the early 2000s, I was singing here with men's choir, inspiration choral ensemble, and the Levites. So I mean, I was basically singing every singing day, all, the time. all the time. And I had, um, I actually had a medical condition mm -hmm. where I had developed polyps on yeah. my vocal cords. Because right. I was always hoarse and I would never be able to recover my voice. Mm -hmm. So went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and they said I had these polyps, and, you know, but they weren't to the point where I had to have an operation yeah, right. on them, but they said that if I did vocal rest, mm -hmm. you know, they would be fine. So in the midst of that vocal rest, I also had to wind up doing speech therapy, where I had to basically learn right. how to talk all over all again, over so again. that I wasn't putting a lot of strain yeah. on my vocal cords, so that... You know, so they taught me the different techniques and everything as far as um, proper speaking, breathing, breathing and, proper, and, and, and proper speaking to, you know, where, you know, I was able to have a full singing voice even when I'm hoarse. So, you know, I think the Atlanta Care speech and pathological that is that is, that, is, that, is, that is really amazing. For it really is. all the work that they did yeah. to get me back to singing again because I... I honestly don't know what I would have been able, what I would have done, done. if I wasn't able to sing. Very, very unique singing voice. Yeah, it amazes me that you have a, a ear, a sound of you and Jennings, your father, your your stepfather, not stepfather, but your God godfather. Uh, he too is. Uh, I mean, he can be walking and he can hear hear the tenors and sinners, uh -huh. the, 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 uh, the uh, what do you call them, the different The different, the different sections groups. spread those yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, you can just, yeah. how, do you, how do you do that? I, it, it just, it, just got it, the, the it really just, it sound. comes with time. I mean, you know, I, you know, I've sat, like I said, I've sat under a whole lot of good choir directors, mm -hmm. like I said, starting, you know, right here and everything, you know, with Thomas, um, John Howard Jr., another great choir director. Um, Zapatha, another yeah. great, you know, choir director, you and, 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 and you just, you just learn to develop that ear mm. to be able to hear, to be able to hear every section. Out of all the groups. Out of, you, out of you know, you know, out of all the groups, and, you know, the, and, you know, I mean, it's amazing because you can, you know, be able to decipher it is, who's it is singing amazing. sharp, yeah, who's right. singing flat, who's not doing what they're supposed to be. You know, you know who's not doing. You know what they're supposed to be doing, and we've been in many choir rehearsals where you know Thomas is like, okay, one person from each section, yeah. you get up and you sing a trio. We're gonna find out, yeah. you know, yeah. who's singing wrong. Because I mean, the overall goal is that you want a, you want a great, genuine pride right. because you're doing ministry. You know, the, that the, is a ministry, and you want the Lord to be right. pleased. So oh, yeah. you want to make sure that you know it's. That is right and it's correct. Uh, I understand that. that did uh, Miss Doctor Beverly Vaughn ever help you? In she the, did. Um, she uh, one of my elective classes um, was the college chorus. Yeah, over what at, I thought it was the college. Over, yeah. over, at, over at Stockton, and um, and it's funny because I mean everybody knows 
Dr. Vaughn, oh, yeah. and everybody knows how her her, it, her yeah. energy and oh, yes. you know what she you know what she does. So I actually had met Dr. Vaughn outside of Stockton before I you know I became a student, and she knew my parents you know real well. So you know naturally I could not go through Stockton and not at least take You're right. one course with with her, Dr. Vaughn. So you know I did the college course class. And you know, like we did handles Messiah. Um, I and I actually sang in high school mm -hmm. as well. I was part of the theater department um, in high school. But going back to Stockton with Beverly Vaughn, and um, I was actually me and another good brother, Minister Jared Howard. We were in school at the same time, and um, Beverly Vaughn had another class called Music of Black Americans, where she would do different genres of of, you know, black American music. Yeah. So, you know, she would pull us she in whenever, that. She's got whenever energy, she man. Yeah. I'm you. And whenever she did the gospel sections of that class, she would always call me in to sing and call Mr. Jared in to play the the piano and, you know, we would she would and, you know, I really think that she would just, you know, try to use me use me all the time. Yeah, right. Because, you know, one of her other Things were if you were late to her class, you had to yeah. get up in the class right. and right. sing. So Sweet. that was one of the things I had to do right. every class, and I was never late. But <laughs> you know, one of the things I had, that I had to always wind up doing. But yeah, she she was another one that was yeah, you know very you, I guess, right. that was very instrumental. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Listen, uh, you are the director of the men's choir, of Second Baptist Church. What are you? Uh, what are your desires for those for that, that group? You are the leader, and uh, I, I watch. I you, I watch in amazement. <laughs> I really do. Uh, you can sing each group's part just by sound. I don't know how you do it, but and you go from one to the other, uh -huh. and it's amazing. You know, you, only when you get to us, the bass, you know, which is the and it's too low for me. About that. It's too low for you. I know y'all 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 can't do this. Low. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you do that? How do you neck? Um, you know, whenever you each song that we sing, you can really it goes studying is a whole lot mm -hmm. that deals with that. Um, and especially, I mean, with any choir, but um, with. Men's choir, there's really not a lot of, um, there's really not a, a lot of songs, choir yeah, songs yeah, like, that are sang yeah, by yeah, just yeah. all men. When you when you hear, um, you know, men, it's like male choruses, like a lot of the quartet mm -hmm. music, and um, you know, a lot of like the older, more traditional gospel sound and when. Miss Jennings first had the vision to put together a men's choir. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted it to be. He wanted it to be a men's choir where, you know, we sang like the contemporary choir songs. Mm -hmm. So naturally when you have, um, when you're trying to teach songs, you're getting regular choir songs that have a soprano, alto, and yeah. a tenor in it. Yeah. So you have to basically take those parts, those parts and yeah. then convert them into what we have on the men's choir, first tenor, second tenor, mm -hmm. basses and baritones. Mm -hmm. So I mean it it takes it takes a lot of studying. You know, I'm at home listening to music. I'm at work listening to music and, I'm, an air for and I'm singing and I'm and I'm singing I'm in the gym yeah, right, listening to right. music and I, you know just trying to and and I'm singing all four parts. And everything, you know, trying to hear what sounds good, and also, you know, I thank God for, you know, our our musician, you know, well, Minister that, Richard that, Smith, well, that tubs, aka Tubbs, and DJ, because, you know, I run stuff past yeah. them as well, and like, how does this sound? How does this sound? How does that sound? And you know, that that kind of helps, and you know, makes a difference. But I mean, really, the main thing is just, you know. Studying and loving what and you're loving doing, and, yeah, and, what you know, doing. loving what you do. Absolutely. Oh, great! Listen, all of that is great. When did you decide to give your life to Christ? 
Well, I think I really, I mean, of course I joined yes. when I was 10 years old. Joining and giving like, Joining right, and right, giving yeah. is different. I think, um, I think my experience with the Lord coming into my life happened when I was about 14. I was, about, I, was about, I was about I was about 14 years Yo. old, and I, I'll never forget it. Um, it. Was in the house on a Sunday morning, and this is right before we were coming to church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we watched Bobby Jones Gospel religiously yeah. on um, BET, I did too. and um, it just so happened that that particular Sunday. This was back when Reverend James Brown had Yes, God is Real mm -hmm. going on the play. And they were out in Tennessee doing the show, and they were actually on Bobby Jones. Mm -hmm. And they did um, a I few snippets. I saw that show. Yeah, they did a few snippets from the play. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Bishop Lyles and uh, Betty Graves Scott, Mama Jones, yeah. They sang, Yes, God is Real. And tears just started flowing out of me at that point. And I think and I think that was that was the moment where, you know, I really started to um, understand the Lord and, you know, like to receive the Lord in my life and, you know, going to Bible study and, you know, really getting the word broken mm -hmm. down. And everything. So yeah, I'll, I'll say when I was about fourteen years 14 old. Fourteen years old. That's and I, I mean. love that show. Yes, God. Yeah. I must have seen it about twenty times. Yeah, and I'm mean, and, and and another childhood dream. I mean, that was actually when when um, Reverend Brown resurrected. Yes, God is real. A couple of years ago, I had the opportunity yeah. to be in it, yeah, be in it. as yeah. you know one of you know as you know one of the of the choir members. And everything in the play, so that uh, you know that. You know, I, thinking I, back to that, I really enjoyed the comedian part too. Did, did, Joe Joe, did I work for Nafac too. He he used to uh, Bill Green. Joe Joe, that character was Joe great. Joe. Yeah, yeah character Bill character Green. Part. He actually Bill Green is pastoring. Oh yeah. Now he um he used to pastor Asbury United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. For a, a little no, while, and then he he moved away. I, I I'm not sure where he is now, but um, but yeah, he's he's pastor and and um, when Yes God Is Real first came out in the early '80s, I was a little you know I was a little younger, and Bill Green JoJo played a very convincing very, very, very convincing boy. drunk. And it, and it scared me because I was so little and like he would actually, you know, come out to the crowd and everything. So, you know, and and, and you know, I mean it was funny when we did it again. He Reverend Brown brought uh Reverend Green back to resurrect yeah, right. JoJo. So then, you know, and I and I shared that with him and right. we had a great we had a we had a great laugh. I said I was scared, but now I'm not scared anymore. But yeah. That was yeah. wonderful. One wonderful show. Ever. Yes, it was. I uh, I recently, you know, my son's a basketballer. Yeah. Coach. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For Cedar Creek. Uh huh. And I was never so surprised in my life when I went to one of his games, and I saw this guy running up the <laughs> court with the with the referee's yeah. uniform on, and it happened to be you. Yes. How long have you been doing that? So um, I've been refereeing for about seven years. No kidding. About, you know, I've been refereeing about seven years. Um, you know, I've been a basketball enthusiast for years, and I love high school basketball. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my friends started getting into refereeing and everything. So I said, you know what? Let me find out how I can get involved. No kidding. Yeah. With, um, Was it hard learning how to or? Um. So it actually was kind of because you know I played basketball. I've mm -hmm. coached, you know, I've coached basketball, and, basketball you know, stuff, yeah. with the church team and um, and all that. And you think that you know all the rules yeah. until you get into that referee course, 
and you see that rule book. It's a lot of things that you really did not know, but um, you know, it was an eight week program. Yeah, right. And you know, we did class room work where we went over the rule book extensively, and as well as on the floor. You know, we had to take. You know, we had to take a national test yeah. and a local test. Take a test too for that. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep, and you had to take a floor test so that you could become state certified and everything to be a referee. So I did. I was able to do that in my third year of um, multi-talented. You, you I wear a lot of hats. Oh, I, I wear, you wear a lot of hats. I really what do. What you call multi-faceted? Yes, yes. Well, yes. Thank God. Thank God for you, Joy. Listen. We're just about finished with this interview. I really enjoyed this. Oh, me too. Uh, me too. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add to here that I didn't hit on? Well, um, another thing that I that I do take pride in too is my work with the youth. I'm also oh, yes. I'm also the youth director for the Swagger Ministry um, here at at the church. Um, it actually happened. I don't want to say by accident. I kind of stumbled into it. Yeah. Um, you know. Youth ministry was something that was, ministry. that oh, was, yes. and I mean, it was something that was big for us mm -hmm. growing up. I mean, I was heavily involved in, in the youth ministry growing up under Curtis Gunn, Minister, mm -hmm. Minister Curtis Gunn. Mm -hmm. He was our um, youth director back when I was a teenager. And, you know, we did a whole lot of activities and things like that. So when the vision came back up for past the days to resurrect the youth ministry, um, we kind of had a transition um, in the leadership, mm -hmm. and nobody, it seemed, you know, I, it, nobody really was too eager to step they, up they into up there, right. into that you know leadership role. position. Yeah. So you know, you know, I kind of you know picked that up, and um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed to have a great team of people you are blessed. that, Enjoy. that um, you know, work with us and, you know, we do the Swagger Sundays on, you know, every fifth Sunday mm -hmm. we do Swagger Sunday mm -hmm. and we try to make that a big event for our young people and, you know, right now our challenge is just trying to keep the young people involved and, I mean, that's some of the things that we're trying to work on with the with the Swagger Ministry, but I, I really enjoy working with the youth. I've been working with them since I graduated from college. And you yourself. So. And I'm a, yeah, yeah. thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. And, um, but that was one of the things that I said that I wanted to be able to give back, mm -hmm. you know, you know, after I graduated, you know, like those same adults that mentored me when I was a young person. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, like in my teenage years, and like it shows was, you. You have that persona about yeah. you, and uh, you just you can see it in you. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, it's sir. a wonderful thing. It really yes, is. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I enjoyed uh, it. Thank you so and, much. And uh, you'll be watching this on television, won't it? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you so it's much. A pleasure. Thank you so it's much. A pleasure. A pleasure. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, they're going to.